my grandfather wasn't a brute. He was mind-numbingly mediocre. He was an ordinary man who moved from one bad thing to the next, to the next, to the next. He slipped into a category of crimes that had he perhaps at the very beginning been shown where he would be going, he might have been a bit shocked. Although he was an early member of the Nazi party, he was relatively late to signing up for a right-wing organisation. I mean, people had been doing this since, since the early 1920s. I think maybe it had something to do with his landlord, who was a very keen Nazi. And that same landlord, when my grandfather was out of work with a wife and three children to support, knew a man who was very senior in the SS and had gone to the same school as my grandfather. And so he arranged for my grandfather to meet Heinrich Himmler's deputy. And then he was offered a job and that involved six months away from the family to be trained as an officer of the SS. By 1938, the SS had by then realised that there was a huge intake of, of, of Jews and, and other people that they considered undesirables. And they worked out that they could make money out of them. They didn't pay them, but they got them to work. And so the whole thing was then shifted to Berlin and my grandfather was moved to Berlin. But most of his work was going to the various concentration camps. In effect, they were his factories and the slave laborers were his employees. I don't think he believed that what he had done was wrong, just like so many in the SS. And indeed, um, reading the, the, the account of his trial and the, the account of the trial judge and the prosecution, one of the, the points that was made against him was that he showed no contrition and no remorse for what he did. You know, he was, he was in the SS for 10 years and there's no, there's no evidence that he did anything to, to, to pull back from what he was doing. Obviously, we don't know what sort of pressures were on him, but, but he carried on working.